Amber Heard gets caught lying in the court and the judge is not happy about it. I'm gonna tell you all about it in this video. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung. I'm an attorney. I'm also a narcissist negotiation expert. And in these videos that on this channel, I teach you all about how to break free from narcissistic relationships. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. I upload brand new content every single day, and I want to help you break free from the drama, trauma, and chaos of narcissistic relationships. Okay, so getting into what's going on with Amber Heard and how many times she has been caught lying in front of the court. I'm going to break down so many times that she has been caught lying with this court and the judge is fed up. Now, let me tell you something. Judges do not like liars. They do not like liars more than anything because they see it as a personal affront to the court. And when you go before the judge as a court of law, your credibility is everything. When you lose your credibility, you basically lose everything. And especially when you've got a jury sitting there, you want that jury to think that you are the believable one. You want that jury to believe everything that's coming out of your mouth. You know, I mean, it's one thing to maybe one time, if there's some kind of inconsistency that you can maybe rationalize, but several so what I'm going to do in this video is point out that there are several in inconsistencies. And when you get to so many that the judge is actually kind of schooling you on it, there's going to be a problem. So the most recent one where the judge actually schooled her was with regard to the first time Johnny got aggressive with her. And this goes back to an incident, I guess, happened in 2012, 2013, who knows? And it was referring to when, I guess, the police got involved. And what she was saying, she was being questioned by her own attorney, Elaine Bredehoft. And she previously said, claimed that Johnny, the first time that Johnny got aggressive with her, was when he was arrested in 2013. Then she takes the witness stand on May 16th, and she testifies that the first time that he got aggressive with her was in 2012. Now the story changes, right? Now her lawyer has to try to rehabilitate her. And she gets questioned about this. And when she gets questioned about it, she is back and forth trying to figure out why, you know, she couldn't remember it correctly. And she ends up saying something super lame, like my memory doesn't work that way or something really super lame. And believe me, I've had to be there in that position when my client hasn't told the truth before. And it's not a fun position. In, in a lot of ways, I actually feel for her lawyer, you know, where she's trying to rehabilitate her, her client's credibility. And, you know, she's basically saying, oh, that's not how my memory works or something like that. Then the judge, Penny Ascarati, I think I'm saying that correctly, says something like, you better be careful about willfully disregarding the truth, because if you're potentially lying to the court, you're going to be in trouble. Perjury is a big, massive offense, so you better be careful. And when you hear words like that from the judge, you know you're in trouble. And, and by the way, how is it that she's remembering all of these other super min minute details about dirty carpet and fees and all these other super minute details. And she doesn't remember the first time that 
this guy was aggressive with her. It, it seems really, really suspect. And by the way, during her testimony about the first time he got aggressive with her, she even says something like, I will never forget it. It changed my life. You know, so she even said it was life changing it. She couldn't remember the year when it happened. So very, very suspect. And I'm quite sure that that won't be lost on the jury. So we'll see. And if the jury doesn't buy her testimony, doesn't buy her as a credible witness, then her whole entire case is going to be suspect. Several other times that her story didn't add up, the Milani makeup situation where she said that she used a particular cover-up kit, the Milani Plus Perfect all-in-one correcting kit. Her lawyer held up a particular correcting kit, said that this was the kit that she used the entire time to cover up bruises. Amber said, oh, I used the pinks for the certain days. As time went on, it became this color and then that color. And as they developed, blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, the only problem with that is that Milani itself came out and said, hey, by the way, we didn't even make that kit until 2017. And the time period that Amber was testifying about was 2014 to 2016. Again, that's a problem. Now, I guess one could say that maybe that kit was representative of a kit that she was using. I don't know. Again, it seems suspect. Another problem was when she said that Johnny Depp was extremely jealous of her and so therefore she didn't take any roles that were of a sexual nature the entire time that she was in a relationship with him. Yet there she is in a Magic Mike movie doing super raunchy scenes with Channing Tatum, very, very easily verifiable. Why would she say things like that when it's something that's extremely public and easily verifiable? I mean, that's just not even a smart thing to do. And she even did videos, interviews after the movie where she said, I was brought in, we did the scenes together. It was really, really fun. We laughed the entire time. This is not a person who seemed like she was afraid of her jealous husband, by the way. Okay, so another one was she testified about this dog situation and how he held her dog out the window. She said it was really eerie. She seemed like horrified that he held her dog out the window. And then right after she testifies about that, it was almost brazen, almost like she was daring people to, to see this where she holds her own dog out the window on social media, had put, puts a picture of it where she's holding her own dog out the window of her car. It's crazy. Why, why would she even bother to do that where everybody is going to see that? insanity. Another one was where she said that he hit her across the face with these rings. She testified that he always wore these rings. He hit her across the face, but there were no marks or bruises or cuts on her face. Not one single mark on her face. Yet he wore these massive, huge, chunky rings, nothing on her face. So that, that's an issue. Another one was where she said in March of 2013, there was a picture that debunked her claim of allegations of abuse the night before they had some sort of a function with Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. And she said she had been assaulted the night before. Again, something with the face, not one single hint of an injury on her face. Another one was where she said that she had massive injuries on her face the night before she appeared 
on James Corden. She said she had black eyes and a massive injury to her nose, swelling of her nose. And you can see where when she goes on James Corden, I mean, makeup will only do so much. There's absolutely no swelling to her nose, no injuries on her nose. And in addition to that, the there was a woman who, I think her name was, her last name was McMillan or something like that, who had seen even seen her that day without makeup, who said there were no black eyes, no swelling of the nose, nothing. Another one was the donations, the donations to the ACLU and to Children's Hospital, where she had gone on television. She had expressly stated to the world that she had donated this seven million dollar settlement to charity and then admitted under oath that she had donated not even one penny to charity she still had it all in her possession or whatever she hasn't spent but she hadn't donated any of it to charity these things really erode at one's credibility. And if the jury is taking note of all of that, she's not going to be looking like this sympathetic person. And especially because she's lying about things like domestic violence or donating to charity and, you know, major things. She's not lying about, you know, whether she wore white one day instead of yellow or, you know, things that are of no consequence. I mean, these are things that are major, major things that are extremely hurtful to a lot of people. And obviously there was a psychologist that was hired by Depp's legal team who did testify that she has borderline personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder. She testified that she has PTSD. Obviously it was a, a psychologist hired by Depp's team. So there will be a bias involved, you know, so the jury will have to look at that and weigh that in terms of bias, meaning that was somebody that was hired by Depp's team. But taking that into consideration, if that's true, if it's true that she does have these types of disorders, maybe it's because she does have these disorders that it causes her to, you know, want to create drama in her life and take that all into consideration and in, in thinking about what, what it is that she may be creating here. Who knows? Maybe she, there is a certain amount of of truth to some of the things that she is saying but it seems to me that there are certain inconsistencies in a lot of what she is saying as well and because there are a lot of inconsistencies it is eroding at her credibility and because it is eroding at her credibility to especially to the extent that she is now being schooled by the judge, especially in front of the jury, that is going to end up being an issue for her. I would love to know what you think. And by the way, I've done other videos on this. I did a video on my reaction to her cross-examination. I would definitely check that out as well. I would love to know what your comments are below. Put them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell. If you are getting ready to negotiate, make sure to grab my free crush, my negotiation prep worksheet at winmynegotiation.com. Feel free to join my free private Facebook group as well. Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. Make sure you like this video, give it a like, give it a share. And thank you so much for stopping by. And I will see all of you guys in the next video video.